Hello YouTube and welcome to a new tax loss video. Let's continue with a brand new Honor 10 smartphone. And now we are going to do the setup. We got our nano SIM card ready, our SIM card to all as well. And we are going to run through the setup process and then have a quick look around about display brightness, how good is the display quality, what about the fingerprint scanner under the glass, cameras and 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 so. SIM card slot is on the left side of the device and SIM cards are SIM 1, SIM 2. There is no micro SD card slot, so think about that before you decide if you choose the Honor 10 with 64 gigabytes of storage or for 50 euros more the Honor 10 with 128 gigabytes of storage. The on off button is on the right side. Push it, push it, push it until there's a vibration. And there we see the Honor logo. Honor powered by Android in this classical Honor Blue. The first step will be to choose your language. So I now choose English. Uh, which English you can choose, I just say United Kingdom. And next step, then you have to agree to the terms and conditions. Yes, you agree. Then you have got the question if you want to join the user experience program. I say no, or I say just later. Then you have to agree to the phone management services declaration. There's no other way around it. And then Wi-Fi Plus service and weather services you can choose by yourself if you agree or not, if you don't agree or if you disagree. And then we got to the Wi-Fi things. You can skip the Wi-Fi uh, setup and just use your mobile data to set up the device. But I'm at home. I choose my Wi-Fi and enter my Wi-Fi password. Oh, and look, Swift key as a keyboard is still on board. And when you're connected, then you hit next. And then it's going to check for updates. And then Android is giving me the opportunity to copy my data from an Android device, from an iPhone or from the cloud. But I say no, I want to set up new. I want a fresh start because I want to see how much free storage uh, will I still have on the device. Next step is Google. Sign it to your Google account with your Google email and your Google email password. Then agree. And then we see the Google services. Here again, backup storage, location, and all this feature. You can mark and check them or uncheck them, just how you like them, them to use them. And so you have to scr scroll all the way down, then hit agree. And there we go to the screen lock protection. I just say later because I want to use the fingerprint scanner and the uh, face ID. So um, skip anyway, because later I have to enter uh, a pass PIN password or pattern. And now Huawei uh, is asking me for my Huawei ID or Honor is asking me for my Huawei ID. And this is something I can't, really don't understand. Yes, Honor is the sub brand of Huawei. But if you talk to Honor people, they always will tell you, no, we are not Huawei. We are totally separated. We are our own company, but still. You use their devices and still have to use Huawei ID or Huawei services. You still get Huawei charger with your Honor device and 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 so maybe next year they will get their own cloud services. Um, then do I want to do it's, it's data transfer. It's the same in blue, in green or in blue and white blue dish uh, that we got before, but this time just from Huawei or from Honor from the Emotion UI. Um, Again, Google gave us the chance built in Android and now Huawei is giving us the same chance built in Emotion UI. Uh, but no, then not now. I don't want to use the Honor Cloud or the Huawei Cloud. And there we go. Device protection. These are the points. Set fingerprint ID. Uh, yes, this is going to be what I'm going to do. And there is the thing you have to use or you have to set up as well. Pattern, pin or password in terms your finger is lost if damaged or someone else should unlock the device. I just choose my hard to guess pin. Then you have to type it in again to, uh, to confirm it. And now the fingerprint scanner is under the glass. It's not under the touch screen, but down here. Um, and this is one of the first fingerprint scanners I've seen that's built under the glass. And oh, this is reacting a little bit slow. I'm definitely looking forward to figure out how fast this scanner will be compared to the other, the normal one we had on our fingerprint scanner, which were amazingly fast. 
So just follow the instructions on which part of your finger you have to scan in. So, and now successfully finger ID one, but there's no chance now that I can do scan out of the box another finger, but there's a trick. I scanned my right thumb. I also want to use my left thumb, depending on, on which hand I will operate the on a nine, uh, on a 10. Just go one step back. Then you're here again, enable, enter, re-enter your pin, and then scan the next finger. So let's start, follow the instructions. And now you can see my left finger is now fingerprint ID number two. So there we go. And now I can use the, uh, set also uh, the face ID or the face unlock. I'm going to use this as well. There's the instructions, just lift the phone and look into the camera. So continue, agree, and now let's scan. And it's done, there we go. And now get free access to popular apps. No, you don't want to do this. It's just, it's just advertisement that you still got enough apps on the device, so I just hit cancel. Uh, now it's a question, Google Assistant, if you want to use it, I want to use it. I give him access to my location history and now so yes, I am going to uh, use it this way. Activate it with my pin, with my correct pin. Okay, hit next. And there we go. Now we are done. And the next step will bring us into the home screen. And so first step, I head over to settings and we will check how much free storage do we still got. So out of the 128 gigabytes, there are 115 gigabytes left. So 13 gigabytes have already been lost in the uh, translation and we have got big firmware 8.34 and nearly 800 megabytes on apps. So 13 gigabytes are gone. On the 64 gigabytes, I would sell 12 gigabytes will be gone. Uh, so there we could, would still have above 50 gigabytes, so 52 gigabytes, which should be enough, even if you're just now thinking about the 64 gigabyte version. So let's find out which apps are pre-installed. We got a phone man manager, themes, music, video. So these are the standard Huawei apps or Emotion UI apps, but as well, we got the Google apps. So Google, Gmail, Maps, YouTube, Sheets, and all the stuff. And on the next page, we get more Emotion UI apps. We got a lot of tools sound recorder, torch, a flashlight, and all this stuff. Oh, and there's Microsoft, Microsoft Translator, which is uh, one of the few apps that's really supporting the Kirin 970, uh, which is built into the device and the AI features. Tops apps, we still get them as well, as always, Instagram, Booking, eBay, Netflix, Facebook, and we get a couple of games. And of course, you can delete them all. So next step will be the big question about the fingerprint scanner, which is, whoa, slow. <laughs> this took time. Oh, this was faster, but still, this is definitely not as fast as on previous generations of Honor and Huawei devices. Now let's take a finger that is not, that's not, that's wrong. Okay, there you go. It's still recognizing it, but this takes definitely time okay it's fast enough so that I, if i got the device in my in my trousers in my pocket i pull it out unlock it if i pull it out and if um when my eyes are hitting the screen the screen should be unlocked yes but compared to things that we know from the honor 9 or maybe the p20 pro and all those devices those devices unlock way faster oh what about the fingerprints uh, the, uh, the face id <laughs> face ID is way faster and this is the first time I've said that about an Honor or Huawei device. I never th thought this would happen that face ID will would be faster than than the fingerprint scanner. This is new. So next step, what about the display? So we got a lot of reflections here. Let's pump the, uh, the display brightness up to maximum. And still you can see a lot of reflections, but it should be enough to see something if you're going to, if you're going outside. Uh, but this is definitely one point I'm going to test or check out if I'm going out into the next couple of weeks. 
Uh, but first impression is okay. Nice viewing angles, nice color. Maybe not top of the notch or top of the line IPS displays, but I'm definitely going to check it out. Um, but but first impression, it's it's okay for the price of 400 or 450 euros. It's still fine. Next big step. What about the camera? Switch camera modus, GPS tag. I allow it. And there we go. Let's have a first look into settings. There we go with the resolution. We got a 60 megapixel camera or RGB uh, color camera or color, color sensor, which full resolution is four by three or in the full resolution you get if you take pictures in four by three. The 24 megapixel is a monochrome sensor, which is as always the thing we knew from other devices. Yes, you can, could take to, uh, 24 megapixel colored pictures but this is not the real thing stay with the 60 megapixels this is my recommendation and now this is just the normal picture modus okay okay let's just shoot them quick and dirty there we go and then we got this ai feature here just for your guidance if you take your object this is your object and you take a picture and compared now you can choose the AI feature which should give you better or more colored more vivid colors so let's do the same again and now if you compare both pictures this is the AI picture this is a not AI picture and yes colors are way brighter even though this is focused on the reflection on the display and this is more on the device so um, this is only feature I guess it's now for 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 the for the camera. Um, now we got even portrait aperture mode, which we can play around with. Oh, what about the video mode? Oh no, let's check out more. Which options do I got? I got slow motion, monochrome, time lapse, watermark, artist, pro modus. Okay, HDR mode, uh, lens, night shot, painting, and document scanner. There is one thing missing in comparison to the. Um, P20 Pro, this is uh, night mode, uh, the, the, which gives you incredible nice pictures because it's playing around uh, with, with the time. Um, this is not exactly the same thing as where do we got it here with the night shot. Um, but these are things I will figure out in the next couple of days and weeks. But what about video quality, video size, full HD, full HD plus with uh, 60 frames. And we can also shoot in 18 by 9. And one last thing, we also can shoot in 4K. And listen, the, the Honor 10 got OIS, so an optical image stabilization. And I'm going to test this one out with with a 4k video so let's start i keep talking and now if i'm moving around let's see what we will get here and now let's see it video so let's start oh nice talking nice and now if i'm moving around let's see what we will get here nice audio quality and i have to say image stabilization First impression, okay. Oh, one last thing. Uh, what about the front-facing camera? Okay, not the video modus, but the portrait mode. And no, I don't want the beauty level. I know beauty level, but I'm definitely a fan of the bouquet thingies. So where do we go? There's bouquet enabled. And now we take our picture and mirror on, yes. And now we see, nice first impression, yes. The bokeh mode is not perfect on my hair. Okay, my hair is like like end boss level, but still, um, okay. Maybe I would have expected a bit better image quality of a 24 megapixel camera, 24 megapixel sensor, but still definitely a nice usable picture, I would say. So this is it. This is the first impression of the new Honor 10. Um, definitely gives me the look and feel or a better look and the same feel like like on an honor 9 and if i have to say we get the same price but therefore we get newer hardware a way bigger screen uh, still a headphone jack which i really like thank you honor for that and i'm really looking forward here about all the things and features and yes um, two things okay we still do two things number one display notch and yes you can hide the notch 
there you can see the difference between enabling the notch and hiding the notch. If you hide the notch, you still use the free storage or the space on top for your provider, for your battery percentage, for the time, which is nice and neat. So if you don't want this look, you can get this look. And the other thing I just wanted to check was the usage of the fingerprint scanner. So you got system and then system navigation and there you can use off screen navigation button. And now if you hit the uh, fingerprint scanner once, uh, it will get one step back, it's just back. If you swipe left or right, you will use the app switch and if you press long, it's like you're pushing the home button. And now if you're wondering what about uh, the one hand operation thingies like swiping and getting the screen down, it's now swipe from the corner into the middle and then you can reach the top of every app or just hit, uh, head over to settings and all the things. And I'm really looking forward to check out how well this on-screen or this fingerprint scanner beneath the glass is working and if you can use it as in this mode. So this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.